Well, okay, so we are here with the top four. We're given an acting challenge of soap opera proportions, a pantomime of pantodame runway, unresolved issues resolved and then unresolved again, and a remaining factor number that I think a lot of people are happy about, but then again, it's also like, we kind of saw this coming, maybe? I don't know. Let's talk about this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK Season 2. Cue my theme music. Listen. It's your boy Maddie Rance. Thank you so much for tuning into the channel. Do me a favor and hit that like button. Mm. Share with your friends, your kids, and those who you don't even care about. And also subscribe to the channel, become a part of my Rant Pack family. And if you already are part of it, how you doing? Yeah, plus, plus, listen, all that good stuff. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. We're now 17,000 plus strong. Hope to keep the Rant Pack growing and growing and growing. And I appreciate y'all for tuning in each and every week to my channel. Now, I'm not going to make this review a long one here. It's only four queens left. We got not that much to talk about, but at the same time, we can sum it up real quick here. Plus, we have the panel on Sunday, and my good sis, Miss Duda Ritz, picture up top, is going to be one of our special guests, and I'm super excited about that. Remember, that's 2 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Eastern on my YouTube channel and Facebook page, the panel with my co-host, Jamar84, C. Diggy1, Blakeisha, and duly underscore underscore noted, or Jamel for the girls that know. Anywho, let's go ahead and get my social medias out the way so we can go ahead and get into this review. That would be at Maddie Rance over the Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Cameo. I am a bookable queen on Camable. On Camable? Cam what, what is Camable? <laughs> I'm going too fast. All right, and you can also catch me on the Twitter at the Matty Rats. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, please and thank you. Uh, your boy's trying to get a car. So low key, <laughs> whatever. Now my new mission is to save and save and get this cash car that I'm trying to get that actually was a decent car I saw. But anywho, cash app dollar sign Matty Rants, Venmo Matty Dash Rants, and paypal.me forward slash Matty Rants. Let's get into this episode. East Beast Beast Enders. Alyssa Edwards, they should have cut you a check for that. All right. Bing, bang, bong. Lawrence and Bimini have three badges. Tace has one. Ellie's got none. Like, I... <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. We're walking back into the workroom. Ahura was just sent home with two badges on her chest and, uh, and a sour poos poos of a face. And everyone's kind of like, wow, chickies, we've made it to the top four. But bing, bang, bong. Ellie, where were your badges? Lawrence is still a little bit pressed over last week's proceedings with Ellie making a decision that was best for her game, but not best for Lawrence's. And of course, Lawrence makes a nasty jab that was kind of like worth its weight in gold with the, well, did it help you any? Did you get a badge by doing what you did? Well, she survived this week, Lawrence. She survived. And that's kind of the name of the game when you really want to get to the top four. Ask a couple of contestants that never won nothing that made it to the top, okay? The next day, the conversation is still all about what we got and what we don't have and where we're going in this competition and why we're so excited to be the top four. RuPaul comes in, low-key giving me, and I don't want this to be offensive, but child, when I saw that little beanie on top of his head, why is this giving me Dave Chappelle's crackhead skit tease? Just a tad bit. I'm not including the powder or the shakes. I'm just... The ensemble, I, well, low key, your outfit is everything. I live for this whole entire suit. I, the beanie just killed me. <laughs> I was like, where is this coming from? Whew, girl, anywho, I'm just glad it's not one of those piss and go wigs that she's been dropping on top of that scalp. RuPaul introduces the mini challenge. It's about puppets. Everybody loves puppets. Y'all know I'm a huge Muppet fan here. But um, 
what we got wasn't that. Now there was a dramatic event that just took place last week with these queens where one of the queens was mad at the other one for putting them in a position where they could have ended up failing and they was like, eh, it was like, eh, it was like, eh, it was like, eh. So when the puppets came out, I assumed, oh, y'all are just gonna give them each other's puppets because that way they can read each other and you can continue the storyline. Only one of them got what they wanted, which made me feel like, oh, is it really random? Because I could have swore somebody was back there just handing them puppets, right? RuPaul brings up the puppet challenge. They must make over these puppets and their competitors and, of course, make fun of them, poke and prod, all that good stuff, right? So Lawrence picks Ellie. <laughs> and Lawrence even narrates this point for us by saying, I bet y'all can't wait to hear what I have to say. Yes, I was very much excited to hear you still go off. And Bimini picked Lawrence. So darn Ellie, you had a chance to redeem yourself in the comedy challenge. Okay, uh, Ellie picked Tace and Tace picked Bimini. The following performances were somewhat entertaining. Mm, yeah, I'll keep that. Ellie redesigned the shit out of Tace's puppet. I love that jacket that they put on Tace's puppet in the first place, Loki. I, I was very jealous of the puppet. I was like, oh my God, the puppet's gotta fly. But Ellie wasn't funny. Matter you hate on her. No, I, if mom is not funny, mom is not funny. Lawrence was trying to be funny. The way that they made up Ellie's uh, puppet, Jesus Christ. I was like, oh, bitch, you don't like her for real. <laughs> like, a fool. You really did, like, overdo it. Like, um, like <laughs> where Ellie could be going every week but never goes, ba basically. <laughs> um, Lawrence, yeah, it got a little purse. Not purse first, little person, no. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just still seeing Lawrence still pressed about it. And it's like, God, I just need this to be over with so we can move on to whatever storyline is better. Bimini was loud. Bimini was loud. Bimini was funny, though, but loud. It was a lot of yelling. <laughs> I was actually here for it. And Tace was doing Bimini, but it was like Tace doing Bimini being Tace. I love you, Tace, but I was like, girl, that's still you, bitch. It's still you. The winner of the mini challenge. Ooh. Oh, 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 hold on, girl. Got all of them. Oh, this one right here. I've been fucking with it, but still. The winner of this week's mini challenge is Bimini. Ooh, Bimini's on a run, everybody. Now, RuPaul then introduces the maxi challenge to the queens. This is a soap opera acting-esque challenge. Ooh, I would have ate this up. This is based off of a popular soap opera called EastEnders. I did my research, everybody. It actually is a decent, good little show. I was like, oh, they got drama on EastEnders, y'all. Like, my ex-roommate is a huge fan of General Hospital, and so I'm low-key into General Hospital as far as American soaps go. But EastEnders was interesting. I was kind of up till 3 o'clock last night watching some of this stuff, and I mean... Now, because Bimini won the mini challenge, Bimini gets to assign the roles, and this is done fairly. Not saying that what Ellie did was still wrong. I mean, play the game, but Bimini was being fair. Okay, I want this person. Where do y'all stand on whoever you want? And everyone seemed to be fair in who they could get. Taste was open to two different characters. So it was like, if I don't get who I want, I can still get the next person who I also want. Lawrence wanted one, Ellie wanted one. It was like, okay, let's go. I do want to read the names of these characters off because I thought they were great. Scott Slater, Thought Bottom. Bitch, I heard that name and wanted to just do do do. <laughs> Karen Bitchell and Phyllis Bitchell. I love that last name, Bitchell. It's kind of everything. I hope someone's real last name is Bitchell so I can say Mr. Bitchell. <laughs> there was a moment between Ellie and Lawrence where some sort of beef was squashed or more or less, I guess, the stew was put on the table. Yeah. I wouldn't say they squashed it. I would say they enjoyed a bowl of stew together with some beef. <laughs> yes. And they were able to see each other. Maybe not the same way, but they were able to see each other. Either way, Ellie sort of, um, you know, opened up to Lawrence. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm still apologizing. Um, again, it wasn't meant to be malicious. But then Lawrence was like, girl, it's not even about you doing that. It's more so you asking us, are we okay with the decision? And... You know, I'm sorry, I don't want to be mean or anything, but it's like, girl, this is the game. This is the game. This is the game. So I also see Lawrence being upset and having a reason to be, but I also see it not being that big of a reason to be upset because, again, if Lawrence was in that position, where would she have put Ellie? Ellie would have been in a horrible spot. Ellie probably would have gone home. So 
Again, I'm glad they were able to come to some sort of resolution, but girl, we'll get to Untucked in a second because they back at it again. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, after the Lawrence and Ellie Diamond moment, Taste needs to borrow a breastplate from Bimini because Taste doesn't wear breastplates. And of course, just like when Jenny Lemon put on that one that was totally not her color, this one is totally not Taste's color, but Taste, I love a good joke. And Taste is like, bitch, that's the joke. We're just not gonna paint over it. We'll just keep it bright, light and bright. And it's just gonna be funny. Like all of a sudden this black man <laughs> <laughs> with these white woman titties. I thought that was hilarious. Good moment there, always good fun. Also, the Queens had a surprise when Natalie Cassidy, a recurring cast member on EastEnders, came there and helped them like prepare or prep for these uh, soap roles by making them get extra or do certain sort of emotions, this, that, and the other. And it was a master class for free that they got via on Drag Race. Michelle. Let me tell you something. I don't know who is whopping and whooping your hair. I don't know who is dipping and dopping and doing your hair. They need to continue. And this gray streak, this little this little number in the front that seems to find its way all over now, I, mm, it's chef's kiss. It's good. It's everything. Please keep this hair game up. It is right, God. It's right. And I had to put this picture up. Her nails were everything too. I said, Michelle is on a roll, bitch. I was living. Living for Michelle this week. Now to these rehearsals. Does it feel like to any of y'all that they focused primarily on Ellie and Lawrence for the critiques part of the um, beast enders here where Michelle could give her notes and sort of coach them through this process? Like it was dead ass Ellie and Lawrence fucking up for the majority of this. Like Bimini had a note. Taste came in, there was one little do this taste and that was it. I didn't see Taste get no more critiques. I didn't see Bimini really get any more critiques. It was like Ellie and Lawrence were doing terrible. And it, and I'm telling you, that's literally what it felt like. Like the editing alone was line, line, oh, they're making me fuck up. Oh, they're making me fuck up. Ah, 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 the entire scene. I said, okay, so they're in the bottom two. All right. At the end of the rehearsals, once everything was done, also the McKay guy, this random, this random mannequin, um, I thought was funny for the skit. I didn't understand why they were on the judges panel. I know they needed to fill a seat, but fuck, I would have rather it just been Michelle and Graham. Like, honestly, like that, who is doing his voice? Were they like having someone pull up the mic and just say it and then everyone laugh afterward? I, I didn't like that didn't seem genuine. It was kind of like, I know they're trying to be playful and this is supposed to be funny, but it just didn't, it didn't flow with me like I wanted it to. Maybe I'm missing the joke in all of it, but I, to me, I was like, why is this, why is, I almost said man, see? I said, why is this mannequin sitting on the panel? That's so silly. I thought they utilized some great for the beast ender skit though. But anywho, again, it just felt like we focused on two people and then the other two was like, eh, they're doing okay. So judging felt very weird later, but we'll go ahead and get into the performances themselves. Hey, if you're watching this, you're like, Matt, new shirt, hair's like, what's going on? I took a shower, I was editing this video and I realized I forgot a part and I cannot go without talking about it. Um, there was a special moment that also happened when the Queens uh, got letters from their families and they were able to talk and sort of have that call back from home. You know, even though they just came back in from, from the pandemic and it's been a couple of weeks now, it's still nice to get letters and have that love and show that support that they need. So I apologize for forgetting that. I low-key was about to just film an audio segment and then post a picture. But I was like, no, let them, let me show them that I stopped myself in the middle of this edit and was like, ooh, let's fix this. So let's get back to the review. And Peppermint, <laughs> y'all, let's be clear. They all did good. I don't know if this was just a highly edited, like put together show for Beast Enders or if maybe after all of those critiques or maybe the critiques that we did see, they actually killed it for the rest of the way. I don't know. I didn't find a problem with anybody. I mean, I, I, who are we looking at here? Like, let's just go through the list. Ellie was an older lady. It didn't seem too ramped up. Like, I guess, I don't know where she could have taken that more and she could have, sh you know, shaken a little bit more, gave a little extra, you know, little, more of a, um improbable moment within those scripted scenes. But I, I mean, Ellie did the job. 
Lawrence, I thought was really good. Now in rehearsal, <laughs> oh. but during the performance itself, I was like, oh, Lawrence, Lawrence kept it together. You could tell where there were moments where there was some skippables and someone had to clip this and that together. You could tell, but I thought Lawrence did a damn good job for what it's worth. Now, I thought personally, between all four of them, Bimini was number one and Taste was number two. Taste was damn near number one. I thought Taste did a good, damn good job. I was here for the dramatics of it all. And then Bimini and Taste's scene with the whole, whole like, I thought that shit was great. Good stuff, some quotable lines. Taste was given great lines in the script. Judging was fucking weird, okay? <laughs> Uh, the the runway we could talk about, but the acting challenge, I was listening to Michelle talk to her like, I was really worried. We don't know. I, I had no idea. I never once saw you worried for a taste. I, I got one one moment of you saying something about her and that was it. Everything was about Lauren Tonelli. <laughs> I thought the show was great. I thought Beef Cinders was good. I kind of want them to do this every season a little bit with the soap opera. I, I kind of do. The scripting was not bad at all. I was entertained. I was entertained. And like I said, all of them did good. Bimini, especially that fuck, that fuck ass wig, <laughs> the way her body was put together, the way she was walking. Bimini was hilarious. And honestly, after this episode, Bimini would probably be my top choice to win the season. It was Lawrence for a, for a long time. And then I saw other girls making their moves, but Bimini has really, really been on the right track. Uh, but I will say Bee Cinders is one of the best skits I've seen from the Drag Race franchise. I thought the shit was funny. I need them to do this every season. But if you're going to show people getting critiqued and you're going to show the process, shell or a judge telling them this needs to be corrected, this needs to be done, do that with everybody. We literally got two people and then nah, nah, and that was it. So it didn't feel correct when we got to the judges panel. It felt very. So wait, what did we miss? I didn't see that. I thought she did good. Like very bad. All right, let's go ahead and get to the runway and the judges panel and judging and everything else. <laughs> bring it to the runway, runway, bring it to the runway, please, clap, clap. RuPaul, um, I like this, I don't love it. I'm weird about the whole deconstructed dress type of bit where it's like two different dresses, one look. The shiny side, I was like, yeah. The other side, which I get is supposed to be the sort of composition, but the way those two mesh together and builds a look. <laughs> I'm okay, <laughs> I'm okay. It's, it's not the worst thing, it's it's okay. I, 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 I love RuPaul, so it's really difficult when I see in certain looks and I wanna be like, what is that? But it's not like it was, what is that? It's just, mm, it's a nice look. <laughs> it's a nice look, no shade, it's, it's a nice look. I just wanted the rest of the dress. <laughs> Michelle Visage, I think you slayed RuPaul this week. Mm hmm Your hair alone. 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 That was pussy. That hair is everything. You look good in green too, sister. Mm-hmm. That part. Stop fighting the colors of the best on you, Michelle. <laughs> oh, Graham Norton looking suave as usual. And then McKay is sitting on the panel and somebody is underneath the table with a microphone trying their best stand-up comedy with RuPaul providing the laugh track. Either that or Graham Norton was taking the mic and doing McKay's voice. I don't know who was doing it, but I was over it. <laughs> I was like, what is happening here? There was even critiques when they were walking down the runway. The mannequin's like, oi, she's proper thick. What? <laughs> it's silly. I get it. I get it. It's silly. <laughs> It's dumb, but it's so silly. Like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> For this runway, I know some people do not know what this is. Because when they said pants of dames, I was like, huh? But once Lawrence walked out, I knew what they were talking about. Pantomimes, okay? And I haven't really seen any in the States like that. I think this is more of a European thing that takes that happens. If they have them out here, it's probably select. Almost clown-like, but not totally... Uh, or a different version of clown that we would be expecting or used to. Um, and they do a lot of shows and performances. I have the pictures up behind me for just references as far as if you're like, so what were they supposed to be? This is what they were supposed to be. This is this is all of it. This, this is it, honey. This is it, okay? Um, 
I hope I, pr I hope I provided somewhat information on what it is. If I'm wrong, you know I appreciate a comment section post where somebody fully educates the children, including myself. All right, I'm a USA baby, so you gotta help me out now every now and then. All right. All right. Category is Pantodames, Pantodames, Pan Panko, Panko, Pantodames, Panko Bread. First up is Lawrence Janey giving you pastel sewing machine. Ooh, waste ruler, please. I actually like this look from Lawrence. I think it's very polished and presentationable. I like that. That's a good word. Presentationable. It's a good look. I like this from Lawrence. It's, 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 it's good. I like it. I like the colors the most about this. I'm very much a fan of these purples and blues and this yellow. It's really pretty together. Um, very well thought out. It's a great look from Lawrence. Great look. Up next is Taze. Hey, friend. Um, mm, okay. Hmm. Ha. Huh? Hmm. <laughs> Am I gonna read? No, 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 no. Cause it, cause you could have just done something completely like left. That was, you, you hit the corner, girl. You didn't go down the street yet. You, you, you hit the corner. We could see your foot. Wait, Taze. That's what we were doing. But you didn't drive down the freeway, bitch. You weren't up into another city, okay? You weren't already registering a new home. You did hit that corner though, cause girl, this ain't pan, this did not give pantomime at all. It didn't give no panta dame, it didn't give no panta. Want to panta, want to, want to, panto nothing. I didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it sister, I love you, but I didn't see it. It's a good look though, even though it is, you know, even though it's low key, it's damn near a bathing suit that's embellished the fuck out of with all these stars and all these it's just metal and jewels and shiny costume jewelry and the wig was appropriate. I felt the makeup was almost panto. It was still a little taste. It was crunchy taste. I didn't. I'll be real. I hated that makeup on taste. Like hated it. I still think this is a better look than that Brillo pad bullshit where she low key could be thrown against the bathroom wall and clean that sucker. So, mm, yes, I stick to that because I remember how the underwear looked underneath and it looked like it was painful. So yeah, this isn't bad. I just don't feel like it fit the assignment. And I feel like if it had been some sort of other thing, taste would have been in a higher, higher placing. Again, I thought their acting performance was excellent. I just, this did not give me what the runway was asking for. Next up is Bimini Bon Boulage. Her and Lawrence Chaney had that similar, I got something on my rear jokes and I'm gonna flip this hoop skirt and you can catch me from behind it or him. Um, I thought that, <laughs> I think Bimini to me sold presentation wise this look. I actually liked her shoes too, the strappies, the straps that were going all the way up the legs. I thought that was hot. Also, Bimini has amazing legs. When she bent over and y'all know I'm a bottom so I don't be playing that, let me look at your booty shit. But at the same time, when she flipped over the hoop skirt, y'all, and I saw this, the rump in the legs, I looked down the legs and I was like, <gasps> yes, yes, queen, yes. But I liked it, I thought it would fit the assignment. I thought it was, I thought it was lovely. And last but not least, look at how quick I'm going through this. Ellie Diamond as the queen, or the queen of hearts, or the queen of kissy hearts, or the queen of something. I thought this was a great look from Ellie. A wonderful not to see a similar silhouette. And I thought this was, it was polished as fuck. To me, honestly, I thought between Lawrence and Ellie for the best looks tonight. I thought Bimini did great too, but I think Ellie's was just a little bit more like constructed or thought out better just a little bit because it was very Regal-esque, very UK, Britannia colors, very that. You know, Lawrence, I thought with the colors too, that very pastel -y feel with the sewing machine, I thought was really sweet. So to me, I thought those two were like my top marks as far as the look goes. But I think Ellie did a great job with construction. Her makeup, again, it's this, it, it's the makeup. It's, that's her face. I'm not even gonna knock it because I was like praising this all beginning of the season. But now I'm like, I expect this mug <laughs> and it's a good mug. So Ellie looked great. I thought this was a good look, puss. Judging was weird. Judging was weird. I do not agree with judging. Um, I agree with where they were on Tace's look. I do not agree with how they came at Tace with her acting. I We didn't see enough critiques from that situation for me to develop a, I agree with you, Michelle, in that moment. So that confused me. 
There were also people who were getting praises that I was like, hold up. What's going on here? Like, I'm not understanding this. Like, did, did we miss something? Like, I felt like there was a piece of this puzzle that was taken out. And then we were watching a judging where they had a full puzzle put together. And I'm missing a couple pieces. Either way, I wasn't pleased. <laughs> I thought Taste should have gotten way more praise for her um, Beast Enders performance. The look, eh, not so much. But the Beast Enders bit, I was like, they should have been giving her high remarks for that. Untucked is as follows. Taste is pressed because I don't know why y'all got what you got. And I got this. I can't believe it. And then Lawrence feeling away because they didn't do so well, but glad that it showed up looking good. And Ellie, well, I know I had issues because you were fucking up your lines and that made me fuck up my lines. Back to arguing again. Lawrence and Ellie. Say what? Well, oh, wait, well, I didn't mean it that way. But no, bitch, you just said... <laughs> I see Lawrence's point on this one, though, because it's like, girl, I know what you didn't just do is throw me up into this equation. Like, Lawrence, you were bad. It was your fault I was bad. Nah, bitch. Like, I do get when you're doing a scene with somebody, it is important for you, the other person to have a flow with you. So that way you can remember your script a little bit better, but also remember your script. <laughs> I do know about that flow, though. That flow is important. And if it skips, it can fuck you up. But being a professional in these situations here, you don't blame other people for your uh, problems, okay? Either way, either way, that was untucked. Click. All right, judging has finished. The queens return back to the stage. No shock and no surprise to most of us here. Bimini Bamboulash is the winner of this week's challenge. That is four repeater badges. Four. Four. So Bimini is now at four. And safe is Lawrence, who's still at three. And now we have Ellie and Tace. We all kind of, I felt like I saw this coming. I did not want, I didn't want to see Tace in the bottom, but it's like, oh my God. They're going to send my sister home because this is her fourth time lip syncing and there's no way, there is no way we're going to keep her like how they did Abby OMG for no reason. Not to say I wanted Tace to go home. Because I really didn't want Tace to go home. To be honest with you, I thought Ellie was going to be eliminated as well. But... It was really difficult to look at a situation where someone has lip synced three times and this lady over here has, an only, has never lip synced, but has never won anything. So it's like, you're at Z, you're at zip. Like if you do a scoreboard kind of reference here, you're at zip, but this bitch over here is negative two. <laughs> right, okay, right, right, because it was always safe. Then we had three lip syncs, right? So that's minus three, <laughs> one badge. Po yeah, minus two, Pl yeah, positive one, negative three, minus two. Yeah, we're still at a negative two. So Taste's track record is lower, but girl, I'm always entertained by Taste and performing. The song was not my favorite though. The last thing on my mind by Steps. I wish this would have taken a few more steps to give us something more up-tempo or they would have saved that Dua Lipa song for this moment. Cause this song wasn't exciting or entertaining to me. It was very hokey and I, I, I get people like it. I totally see where people could love this song. Not for me. Uh, but they were doing it. They were doing stuff. They they did things on stage. Taste, this is the routine I'm used to, but I'm also always still entertained because Taste knows how to just keep eye contact, face control, emote, always on beat. It's Beyonce, always on beat. Always on beat. But I was surprised by Ellie because Ellie was out there giving a show too. You know what's funny though? I'll be real with you. That makeup was difficult to translate specific facial expressions. And that came from both of them. Taste's face is like a work of art. So it's already going to show you something. But Ellie, the way she did her makeup with how it was... It almost took away from whatever she was trying to do emotion-wise with the song. However, I was still entertained. Mama gave a little boom, a boom, a boom, boom. Oh, oh not for the count. Oh, we're giving counts? Okay, interesting, interesting. I don't know if this song deserves that, but you know, hey, go for it. <laughs> this was entertaining, all in all. All of it was entertaining. I felt they both wanted to stay. So when RuPaul gave Taste the first Shantae you stay, I was like, oh, Ellie being eliminated makes sense. In my fantasy, not it doesn't have to be yours, in my fantasy it made sense, okay? Even though I was also like, had Taste been eliminated, that would have made up. Hella sense too. Either way, I could have seen both of them go. But to be honest, I wanted both of them to stay. So when RuPaul told Ellie Diamond 
Shantae, you also stay? I was like, oh, thank God. Thank God. I didn't want a top three. I'm now spoiled in the drag race world. I want top fours. I like it to be a four way. Third runner up, second runner up, first runner up, winner. <laughs> like, I, I need that. <laughs> I need that. Third, second, first, ultimate grand prize. <sighs> These four queens remain in the competition and they're going to the finals. The last episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season two is next week. They are ending on time. Unlike another season. Okay. <laughs> Who is everybody rooting for? Are we rooting for Team Lawrence? Are we Team Ellie Diamond? Are we Team Bimini Bon Boulash? Are we Team Taste? Taste? All right, everybody, you know what to do. Get in that comment section. Tell me what you thought about this week's episode. Did you agree with the judges? Did you love the runway? Did you love the base enders? Did you love the puppet show? Did you love the light skew of drama that was placed in there? <laughs> oh, I sound like Tace. I'm going into an Australian and British accent. They both sound terrible. Um, Tell me what you think. Who are you rooting for? Who do you want to see win this show? Okay, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget we have RuPaul's Drag Race Season 13 review on Saturday. We got the panel on Sunday with my special guest, Dita Ritz. Dita Ritz! Uh, very excited about that. Hey, thanks again for tuning in. I love y'all so, 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 so much. Do me a favor. Hit that like button. Share and subscribe. And don't forget to super duper uber love yourself. Hugs and kisses, my best love and wishes to you, your boy Maddie Rance. I will see you tomorrow. Actually, I'll see you the rest of this weekend. <laughs> Bye, everybody.